and welcome to The Angela Lynn Show. I'm your host, Angela Lynn. We're going to focus on the deaf community as a whole, across the nation, and around the world. It's time we shared with the world what we need to empower, to educate, and inspire deaf and hearing communities. Today, I have the honor to interview someone who is in Ecuador, South America, and through a Zoom interview. Due to Wi-Fi connections, there could be some delays in transmission. Please bear with us because I don't want you to miss this great information and I hope you will enjoy the show. And welcome, Jose. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to focus on the deaf community in Ecuador. Tell us, where are you from and what is your profession? Hi, my name is Jose Aguilar. I am the CEO of the Full Deaf Quality Project for Deaf Persons. The issues are to help the deaf grow in sports like handball and provide deaf role models for positive identity to help represent who they are. That's my project to raise and encourage to empower them. And I also help with the diverse Indians from South America, which is located in Quito. Jose, your information today is very important. It's necessary. So why are you joining the Angela Lynn Show? Hmm, honestly, it is really, really important. The reason is that we both are deaf. Diversity is in the world around us and it's very important to communicate. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching The Angela Lynn Show. So, why are deaf issues so important to you? The issues about the deaf, people here need to be elevated in education. Deaf professionals are not noticeable. It is important to remind others to focus and uplift education Professionals like principals, doctors, lawyers, etc., etc. Also, I want hearing and deaf professionals to gain equality. That's my goal that I wanted. What are some of the situations going on in Ecuador with the deaf community? 
it's a really important situation to talk about. I am a part of a fourth generation deaf family. So for many years, we are fighting and fighting to reach to an important goal and I will never give up on my goal to succeed, which is our goal. Wow! <laughs> Do you believe that education and communication are two important focuses? Yes, I believe that it is important to reach goals on communication and education. I was in awe in the United States of America and at Gallaudet University. There are deaf people that have different professional careers like doctors, lawyers, and I was shocked. I want that dream for here in Ecuador. I want that as a goal. Oh, <laughs> wow, please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching The Angela Lynn Show. So, what type of education programs are available for the deaf in Quito? Well, here in Ecuador, in the area of education, no, 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 we do not have, we need more accessibility having lack of interpreters. We need for teachers to know sign language and much more. That's why I am fighting on an important goal, which is education. Are there any programs for deaf youth? Yes, we have a program in Ecuador, but the problem is when the youths are around here, they are not being educated by the teachers. They finished and received their diplomas. They did not understand what was the purpose of diplomas. Where do they go after? They went to the principals, which have lost their direction for future jobs. I am really worried about that. The youths didn't want to learn what they are supposed to learn. They should not rub off their shoulders. No, they must be educated, which is important for the youths to show their professionalism to the kids in the, of the future. Ecuador will be in a better place as it goes. Who funds these programs? Well, we are full deaf quality project. We give a little money, but we are still fighting to look for donations. Hopefully, my constant reminders to Mayor Yunda for sponsors will help. Some people don't know what programs that deaf people need. That's why I'm still reminding him and I'm not going to give up. Stay tuned for more discussion.
Welcome back. You're watching The Angela Lynn Show, and I'm here with my special guest, Jose Aguilar. Who would be the key person or persons we need to talk to to start correcting this and other issues? At this point, I want to remain on point with Mayor Yunda as a key person because he is a mayor in the whole city of Quito, Ecuador. He is a person, a key person, and I hope to maintain a project on education, communication, and interpreters. That's Mayor Yunda? And you have a very close working relationship with him. Can you relay to my audience some of the incidents that have happened to you or others in Quito because they were deaf? As I mentioned, I am fourth deaf generation. Now I have a deaf nephew who is a fifth deaf generation. I pushed and encouraged him to go to university in the United States of America. He studied and graduated. He was a successful psychologist and religion theologian. Very impressed. Then he came back here to maintain the dream in Ecuador. There were barriers for him due to no interpreter supports. There were issues that caused problems. Oh yes, it is true regarding your question. Also, my life experience in Ecuador was a problem because the teachers do not use sign language. I was struggling to understand and communicate at the same time. I saw that it was a problem. So I went ahead to USA, which was very open and learned so much. There were better accessibilities to interpreters, communication, and TV captions. That's when I educated myself so much with English success. My boss is a manager in America. He was really great to me until I came here and it was nothing to compare like America that I experienced. It is really sad. We need some more support in Ecuador. On another note, I would like to discuss the coronavirus pandemic. It is causing a lot of problems all over the world. What is being done to help deaf people in Ecuador? Ooh. Double unfortunate in here in Ecuador. We are talking about COVID-19, which is a blow up impact experience here. The problem is on the news on TV. We cannot see the interpreter. It has a small screen as it looks like a small fly is on the TV screen. We barely cannot see that very clearly through the interpreter. It is too small to watch. There are diverse young people who do not understand and very aggravated due to no information. They want to communicate to understand what's going on. There are five deaf people that want to commit suicide. Three deaf persons are safe and alive and the other two persons died. It is really sad because there were no services or access for them, which was none. Everyone was isolated and staying home without information. It is really sad as a deaf person was sick with positive COVID-19, he was not provided interpreter or no communication support very mute to communicate. They use a family member to communicate with him, but it was lacking in an unclear understanding. It was sad. It touched my heart. I am worried about others in rural areas that hearing people cannot communicate with deaf people. I hope not more suicides or shoot themselves. I don't want to see that happen like this. I prayed for them all. It was very deep. Wow, the coronavirus is not a joke. 
it is having a huge impact all around the world with this serious illness. I hope that we will find a vaccine or a cure soon. So, are there any interpreters who can support deaf people with social services, uh, medical issues, doctors, hospitals, uh, police department, mental health services, etc.? Oh, it is really heartbreaking that the government is not providing interpreters. It is like your own paid interpreter or barely find a gestural interpreter. The three different issues are, first, the issues of accessibility for a doctor, police, and etc. They provide no interpreter support. Second, the doctor communication was how? Bring a note taker or non-certified gestural interpreter. The doctor wrote and said with his instructions to take pills at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The deaf person said, oh, okay, and didn't understand the concept. He literally took three pills three times a day, nine pills in all. The deaf person had to cut off his leg due to diabetes. Third, a mental health experience was my uncle. My uncle is deaf. He has some family issues. The doctor decided to take my uncle to a mental health hospital. Why does he need to go there? He has fine, he was fine, but the communication was lacking. He was shocked and scared. He killed himself in a mental facility by hitting his head on the wall. It, I was hurt to hear that. The only problem was communication. Is that clear? There are more deaf people who went through similar experiences. There's a deaf woman who was placed in a mental health hospital. I asked, why is she there? She is fine. These people ignored and wanted her to stay there. The doctor continued to give her so many shots, she was unable to think straight. She became a sex object for sexual abuse. They decided to keep this as a secret where she was screaming for her life. It was really sad. The problem is communication and providing service that is clear with care for others. Most of them don't care as if it was like, oh, deaf, who cares? I hope I am clear. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching The Angela Lynn Show. Wow, those are deep points of view and the lack of interpreter support. I understand why you have focused on education and communication as the main focuses in keto. And what is your role with the Santo Domingo Amazon project with Edwin Basurto? Well, my relationship is with a very important person, Edwin Basurto. He is a key person. The real reason was my uncle, Annabal. He was our teacher years ago and during his dying days due to cancer, his goal was always education, to see growth for poor people who need help all around the country. I took the liberty to promise to take his vow from him, to accept his responsibility as my responsibility. Then I decided to work with Edwin to to support the rural areas of the Amazon regions and in Santo Domingo, where they have a mix of different indigenous languages. Courage the growth.
It's so nice to know about your working relationship with Edwin. Lastly, is there an inspirational statement that you want to share with the audience? Hmm, in my heart, I wanted to say, I am giving my heart out to you to share how I feel with you. My dream is good. I want all of the world to know that being deaf is beautiful. As you know, we have the same blood, no matter what our color of skin is. White and black, diverse races. In my heart, we are all human. We are all the same. We all have the same goals in education and communication and collaborating together. It is really equality to the highest point to know that your voice is also my voice. Thank you for sharing your inspirational comment. I know that we could speak for many hours about the deaf community, but my time is up. Thank you so much for joining us. I would love to discuss more interesting issues the next time you are on The Angela Lynn Show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today, and I want you to stay tuned for the next show when we will educate, empower, and inspire you.